Having been born and raised in West Rutland, Vermont, how did you first discover bluegrass music? Oh, it was discovered for me. That would definitely be my parents. Um, I had parents who were big music fans, willing to travel. There was probably a three or four hour radius that if there was any show or festival or concert, you know, close enough that we could make it to it, um, we went. So growing up, I saw a lot of live bluegrass music. There are a lot of good festivals in the Northeast, aren't there? I grew up, yeah, I grew up going to festivals almost every weekend. I mean, in the summer months, you know, almost every week, there were, there were a lot of nice festivals. Those, you know, that was definitely my, my training grounds were the bluegrass festivals in the Northeast. Did they expose you to other kinds of music as well? My parents were very much into old time country and bluegrass music and around our house, that was pretty much it. I have been passionate about bluegrass music since I was a very small person, almost as far back as my memory goes. As a kid, the people who were my parents' heroes just ended up being my heroes. You know, I thought the same thing. And there, I don't think there was ever a time where I said, no, bluegrass isn't cool. Um, I've, always, I've always been in, into bluegrass. What is the most important role you play in Union Station, musically speaking? Oh, I think that's, that's a good question. The most important role that I play it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it's not one role. I mean, it's a, you know, you're there to support the people around you. You're there to, to hopefully listen while you play and not just, not just play. Um, my most important role changes, you know, depending on what we're doing. You know, I think sometimes it's, it, it might be making, you know, Allison or someone else feel at ease, you know, by just being there to, to smile and say everything's okay. You know, you play, you don't worry, you know, no worries. But I would like to think my most important role is, is playing and singing. I mean, I enjoy harmony singing, and especially with Allison. I mean, her voice is, um, you know, people dream of singing with someone like her. I try not to take it for granted that I get to do it every night. Tell us about the guitars you're playing tonight, and specifically, what it is you like about them. The guitars I'm playing tonight, one of them, my main guitar, is a 1946 um, D28 Herringbone, it's a Martin, and it's, it's my first guitar, it's the guitar that I, that I picked up when I first joined this band. Um, I wasn't a guitar player when I actually joined the band, so I had a lot of catching up to do, and I was just very lucky to find this particular guitar. It's very much a player's guitar. I haven't found a nicer guitar for the sound that I like than that one. It just sings the song that I want to hear. My other guitar is, uh, is an, a little bit older. It's a 1936 D18. Again, it's a Martin guitar um, that has a different voice that I, you know, I, I fell in love with it. Well, the first time I heard it, you know, and I played it, I knew I, I knew I had to have it. But I think I have the two guitars that best suit the job I'm trying to do on stage with me tonight. Thank you. Um, I should have been in Mr. Cotter's class. <laughs> Did you think initially the film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, and its soundtrack would have the profound impact on roots music that it has? Boy, I think there's no one out there that can say they thought it would, it would, it would make such a big splash. When we were first approached to do the Oh Brother stuff, we were, we were all very excited because we were Coen Brother fans to start with. So the, at the thought of getting to do some music in one of their movies was extremely appealing. You know, I kind of grew up seeing bluegrass music, or, or you know, the, the music that I love, you know, this, this particular type of roots music, kind of have a ceiling on it. But the bluegrass band sold 10,000 records, they were doing, you know, they were doing well, and they were a, you know, they were real, they were, they were bona fide. The Oh Brother definitely, definitely has reached a lot of people outside of, of our normal bluegrass family, and it's wonderful to hear all the first-timer questions, you know, from the people coming up asking, um, you know, who do I look for? You know, wh who, what other bands are out there? You know, where's the, where's the best place to buy an instrument? It's obvious that there are a lot of new faces turning out to shows and, and tuning into bluegrass music and roots music in general, and Old Brother definitely has a lot to do with that. Do you see Union Station having a role in continuing to keep this wave of enthusiasm and interest in bluegrass and old-time music? I do. I, I want to say so. Um, and even before, even before the the big old brother splash, a lot of my friends, you know, and a lot of people that I grew up with that had different musical tastes had kind of already started to turn this direction. Due to Allison, she has a way of, boy, when when you hear her sing, you don't necessarily think bluegrass music. 
you just know it's quality and you automatically find yourself tuned into at least the core of it is, is bluegrass i've had several people come up and say that you know to, to thank us for for what we do and that it has drawn new people you know to this type of music and I think it will continue to do that even after, you know, Oh Brother kind of settles down. I think that there will be more people tuning in, if, if nothing else, to just hear Allison sing. You're a member of a very busy band. You have your own recording career. You have the Dan Tominsky band. How do you balance all of this with your family life? It's, you know what, that's a work in progress. It's, I'm always... I'm always learning, you know, how to do that, and, and I don't think I've quite figured it out yet. That's the biggest challenge, I think, to what I do, is trying to, trying to balance my home life, which I still, you know, I prioritize my, my family as number one, and, and although I can't always give them the number one time, I think that's the quest, to find out how to use your time well enough so that you can give your family the time they deserve, in which, you know, I don't know if I've ever given them the time they deserve or ever will be able to, with my schedule, but you know, you, you try to stay conscious of it and you try to make sure that you, you keep them as a priority, that you're concerned with how their lives are going and while you're not working, you spend, you know, you spend your time in that direction.